So Jill, thank you very much for, for joining us all the way over from the United States. You've had a busy day. Thank you for having me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I wanted to start off by asking was really, and what I loved about the film was within the first scene, we kind of see the grisly details of what Claire gets up to. And I think once we've, we've established that, then it allows us to really concentrate on the psychology of Claire and, and allows the film to focus on that as opposed to kind of the act itself. Was that something that you always kind of wanted from the film and what your desire was? Yes, um, it's exciting to hear you say that because I'm like, I don't know, if, it was always my intention to right away show or people to go in kind of knowing that this is about a hairstylist that kills people, like that's not what we're learning, you know, in the movie. Um, so it made sense to me that the feature would open up with like her normal routine, like this is how it happens when it's planned and everything goes well. And this is her normal thing to also, could, you know, be the opposite of what then happens as she spirals out of control throughout the rest of the film. But it was always our focus that it's more of like a psychological type thriller, but we're such horror fans that once we, we want to treat all the kills, you know, as horror as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and because and the, the, the theme for me is definitely um, a strong theme is the sense of dissatisfaction, um, a sense of inadequacy in oneself. What was it about that that you wanted to explore and why we, I think as a, as a, as a why we are so dissatisfied in our achievements really? Yeah, it's there's so much in her but it is a lot about yeah how i think unkind we can be to ourselves and how we view ourselves and how we you know how we look what we're achieving um where we are in life and and also kind of ignoring the root of the problem and just trying to cover it up and that doesn't get us anywhere <laughs> um yeah <laughs> literally does not it just keeps the cycle going <laughs> um and it, it kind of started just as like an i that yeah the feeling of wanting of of envy and wanting to know what it feels like to be someone else and kind of how that is delusional because we all have these struggles and there's the, the victim mentality that i have it worse than others and um that that is a you know just tears is so self-destructive to be that way absolutely and we see that obviously spiral as the film goes on and um Najara Townsend ha she provides such a nuanced performance and what gives us this root in interest is as we see the development of Claire we we see this fragility which gives the audience a root and interest was that something that was always important to you as well one thing I really I kind of I battled with personally when writing her I was always worried that I wanted her to feel very human and real and raw and relatable but I acknowledge that what she does, even in a real life serial killer story, is very theatrical and over the top and not believable. So I was like, how does she feel believable, but do very unbelievable things? Um, and so much of that is in Najar's performance. And like you said, I feel like she can say so much, which is barely, barely moving her face. And it's incredible. Like, there's moments still I see in the film where I'm just, I giggle from it because I'm just so ha happy with it. It's something that's not funny by any <laughs> means normally, but um, it's a, uh, I feel like a, not an easy role to carry. It could have been very campy if it wasn't treated right. And um, I mean, half, the role, half of it's her by herself in silence, I feel not speaking. So yeah, we, I feel like we really benefited from Najara was in the short film and we had these years of developing the character together yeah. and that she became so real to us by the time we got to make the movie. 
had you always got a feature in mind when you created the short or did making the short make you then want to think right I want to develop this into a feature length film the the concept from the start I wanted to do a feature length but I had I knew I, I wanted more experience as a director I had only made one short film at the time and had like very high standards for what I do. And I, I was like, I'm not gonna try to go from that little short I made to a feature film. Um, and so it, we just thought, it, we realized like the, the concept made, worked in both ways. We could like show it in a short, we felt well. So just it just made sense to start there. Yeah. And uh, I only wish we kind of started writing the feature right away then. But um, in high, now that we've made it, I'm glad that we kind of, we got to do it on our own like truly independently. But when the short came out, there was lots of interest in a feature. And I was like, yes, I want to make one. I don't have the script ready yet, <laughs> is where I was. <laughs> it's always divine timing with filmmaking. <laughs> I was very frustrated. And there's this beautiful yes. color palette in the film as well. Very heightened colors that gives us this, the audience a sense of surreal, is, um, can you talk a little bit about working with your DOP and, and how much was created it, I suppose, practically and how much was in post? Yeah, um, the color palettes and plan for the movie is a very ser a very big thing that we approach, like started with early on because yeah, it, 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 it need, everyone needs that from our wardrobe to later our color co colorist our color correction um so we were kind of brought a lot from the short i fell in love with like using color in very like extreme ways when i was watching a lot of david fincher movies and kind of realizing people use it to represent th things and it's not just like something to do that looks cool and so uh, that's just I've been obsessed with it ever since I kind of realized that and um with this film we were trying to do so much of this like Claire Olivia as kind of opposites who have a lot of similarities but the, she's kind of the aunt Olivia's kind of always the anti-Claire so we designed like Claire has a look to her life how she dresses how her house looks her the salon and then Olivia's life is kind of opposite in every way and we took that even further we realized well then also when claire would be in the real world like walking down the street or in a coffee shop you know she still stands out like almost looks like she's from another time was the idea like everything is modern and bright and cool colors except for like her life is all warm and all these oranges and yellows and we thought that also would be cool because your typical serial killer story you make them all like scary and cold and dark and her world is kind of like her her lair is kind of the opposite it's supposed to feel like this safe nest which our production designer came up with that she's like that's how she described it to everyone like it's a nest like it's circular she's safe there even though it's still messy it's still beautiful in a way um but we went yeah crazy with the color and it's everything from from our lighting to the production design and the wardrobe through color correction this was all you know like a planned out thing yeah. and the, the other the, the other thing that really strikes is striking in the film is the sound design which felt very sort of john carpenter-esque would i be right in saying that he was an influence there with the sound um i don't know on it not specifically honestly um <laughs> but uh we we worked with this we worked with noise floor a team in chicago it was my first time working with them and like the most fancy sound situation i've ever been through so it was very exciting we have like on short films you know one or two people do like the whole post sound and this was like a whole team of doing all kinds of things um but it was really cool one of my favorite things that i never envisioned well, you said like we didn't do like voiceover type stuff or kind of weird internal things until they suggest that there's like you know a lot of these basement scenes and they had this idea of when she's it's kind of the pinnacle in the movie when she's kind of about to break um 
to put all have all these clips kind of come in like her head her head we really bring it out and i was just like i never thought we would do something like that and loved it but generally with the sound design we just wanted the stuff to be very realistic sounding and like and but when we're close like almost asmr like you can feel it yeah um but the challenging stuff is the is the special effects they're like what does this scalping actually sound like <laughs> <laughs> they're like digging into watermelons and like stabbing fruit and stuff to make that sound <laughs> Fun with the fun with it's it. like velcro and cardboard <laughs> <laughs> and and finally because we haven't got much time left now sadly but um why is horror such an ideal genre um to as um it forms such a great social commentary and i wondered whether what makes horror so just the ideal genre for that really I think because it's, you know, like in a more filtered way to and more maybe exciting or an entertaining way to talk about that kind of stuff versus just straightforward discussing it. Um, and it's something you, I feel like, especially with horror, you can use extreme metaphors for very real issues. And, you know, I think it's, stuff that maybe if they someone saw a drama about something very heavy they might not watch it but you can sneak it in in <laughs> horror movies <laughs> and make people think um it's true but it's i just think it's an exciting thing because of the metaphor that you can do so much and you know kind of take it to like like a surreal place like you said or it's just a a nice lens to talk about deeper things through yeah definitely well jill time is up almost now so thank you very much um for your time today best of luck with yeah. the film and um i shall do my best to spread the word about it over here take care and good luck with it thank you and i had to say i was excited when i saw oh, i'm speaking to a claire today i, know. I say claire, claire is like in my second language is all i, I talk about her all the time <laughs> and we spell it the same way as well yes <laughs>